My mother used to call me Eugene, but nobody else does. That's, uh, that's, uh, that could take about three hours. Uh, when I was growing up, my father and my grandfather opened, ran what was then called Bermans and then evolved into Bermans of Hyannis. And uh, my grandfather and father came to Hyannis in 1922 and they operated in the, what's now where the Cape Cod Bank and a TD Bank is right now. At that time it was Gus's Barbershop, you might remember that, and Simon's Supply. And Simon's Supply, when my grandfather and father moved up to the location at 378 Main Street, they were in the building that was Simon's Supply. And of course it was considered progressive then because the Main Street at that time uh, stopped at Ocean Street. And then it developed and far went farther and now it's of course up to High School Road for year-round business. Not really, because it, it, it evolved. We had a couple of summers where it was just one way, but then during the winter it was two ways, so it evolved into one way and it, it certainly moves traffic today. Wow. <laughs> I was born in 1929. That's a long time ago. Uh, I guess uh, being involved with a community that was so warm and friendly and you felt like you were a part of it, uh, being Jewish and celebrating all the Jewish holidays, even to this day, people come up to me and say, Gene, when are the Jewish high holidays? Because we used to run an ad before Rosh Hashanah. We'd put an ad in the newspaper, we'll be closed for Sunday and Monday or Monday and Tuesday because of the Jewish holidays. And people still remember that. And it's evolved into the Jewish merchants no longer do that, but it's still, they celebrate the holidays. My, when I was born in 1929, my mother and uh, Dorothy Dolans, who her husband was Al Dolans, had the Pioneer Music Company. They used to go up and down the main street of Hyannis and collect 50 cents or a dollar from the Jewish merchants in order to pay the rabbi who they hired uh, five dollars a week. That was his salary. And in addition to that, he did all kinds of other things that would, would not expect of a, a clergy. But it evolved into that. My mother and Dorothy decided that they wanted their children to grow up with some sort of a Jewish education. So the result was they f formed what in 1929 became the Cape Cod Synagogue. And they used to meet in people's living room for Friday night services and the holidays. And then eventually they built, first they were over the, what used to be the stop and shop. It's now Bradford's Hardware. You remember that. And we used to have services every Friday night and for the holidays. And then we built our own building in 1933, 35, something like that. Because I don't, I'm very bad on recollecting prior dates. And then it evolved and we've had several additions and we have what, the, what is currently the synagogue with about 300 members, 300 family members. Very difficult to answer because like so many others, many people are unaffiliated. They don't belong to the synagogue. So for every member that we have, there are probably three that are not members. He was brought here by the congregation and was here for quite a few years, I think something like 22 years, if my memory is right. And he then moved on to go down south and then he was activated in the military and now has a home here in Centerville. Matter of fact, I think he's, I'm not sure if he's running in the 
uh, marathon. Uh, he's run in the last few. He's an incredible in individual. Probably going to grow because it's a haven for retirement. Uh, one of the problems, of course, is we have so many senior citizens that, first of all, they're not going to assume leadership roles. And the result is you have difficulty in filling the needed volunteer positions, just as the town does. Yes, I'd love to see a mayor form of government, but that's beside the point. Uh, I've seen the involvement from town meeting when you used to go to town meeting and I used to go and probably two to three hundred people would show up to run the town. And it was, was very friendly. Uh, the selectmen used to stand up on the stage and uh, the, t the, the town clerk or the moderator ran the meetings and some of it was extremely interesting and others of it was very funny. John Alger was a real piece of work. We really should have charged admission because <laughs> it was funny in many cases, but very frustrating in others. But uh, I'll never forget it. You remember Giulio Renzi? Giulio and I were sitting beside each other during the morning session on a Saturday morning and John Alger was sitting up at the head as the moderator, and Howard Sears was next to him. And Julio and I said, we got to take care of this. And John was quite notorious. He liked gin. We stopped at the package store on the way to the meeting after 1 o'clock, and we took a, a nip of gin, and we filled, put it into the water pitcher and then filled it up with water. Well, John was, the picture was over in front of Howard, and John said, pass me the picture, and he bought himself a glass, and he took a drink, and he took another drink, and he put the picture on the other side of him, which Howard couldn't reach it, and he had a wonderful meeting that day. He never forgave me, forgave me, forgive me, excuse me. <laughs> My home. <laughs> I live over on Weequawket Lake in Holly Point, and I'm, that, that's where I spend most of my time, except when I'm traveling. Kiwanis has been a wonderful experience for me. I've been a member for 61 years. Uh, I've gone all the way up to being governor of New England for Kiwanis with 250 clubs, and I've had the experience of traveling all over the world with Kiwanis, from Nice, France, to uh, let's see, Taipei, uh, I went to, Jap to Tokyo, we've gone to Hong Kong, and it's just been a wonderful experience in addition to all of the other conventions in this country. We're always open to new members and we'd love to have you as a member if you can make it. We meet every Wednesday night at the Yarmouth House and we have a, it's a, it's a lot of fun and we do a lot of good work. We sponsor three key clubs which is the Barnesville High School, or the high, high school level of Kiwanis. And I had the privilege some 56 years ago of sponsoring and being the sponsor of the Barnesville High School Key Club and was involved with them for over 50 years with a great deal of pleasure. You go to a meeting, you're exhausted from a day's work and you're sitting there listening to those people, those young people, and they transmit such wonderful energy that it, it, you feel like a new person when you get out of there. Yeah. And they do a tremendous amount of good in the community. My father and my grandfather. <laughs> I, I w used to go to school and come home and go to the store. And my first job when I c came back from school was to go out and wash the windows in the show windows of the store. And then, just before closing, I had the privilege of sweeping the floor. And I used to go to school wearing a necktie. And I, when I reached my 80th birthday, I said, I'm not wearing a tie any longer. <laughs> and I haven't worn one since.
It was then Barnstable High School at, at grades 7 through 12. And uh, the Iano School, which was attached to it, a little wooden building off to the left, was where they, they did the fifth and sixth grades. And Mr. Curry was the principal of the Hyannis Training School on Ocean Street. And he was a stickler for memorizing poetry. And my mother and father agreed that I wasn't one that would be attuned to that sort of thing. So they got me transferred to the Iano School, which was fifth and sixth grade. And then I went on to the high school. Fred Hodge was the principal, and Al Alfred Knight was the superintendent of the schools. And I, I had what I considered a good education. I was accepted into a fine university, and here I am. I'm Gene Berman. I live in Centerville, and I'm, a, I'm very proud of the town of Barnstable and the way it's operating. Mm -hmm.